Welcome to the Texas Authors Institute TV show, produced by Beyond Bourgeois for the Texas Authors Institute of History, Incorporated, copyright 2024. If you would like to become a sponsor of our show and help us produce great content, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show as a Texas author, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com for more information. Music is Frolic of Words, created for Texas Authors Institute by Happy Fellows. Thank you for watching the Texas Authors Institute of History show with your hostess, Charlotte Cannon. Hi, I'm your host, Charlotte Cannon, author of the award-winning book, You Have to Laugh to Keep from Crying, How to Parent Your Parents. And I am so excited today. I have my good friend, Jill Bean, coming on. And she's going to talk about her book, Growing Up Rumley. And it's a memoir of her life. Jill, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Charlotte. I'm excited about being here. Okay, during this first segment, you know, our listeners like to know your background. And I realize that's really what your book's about. But tell us, you know, about your husband and your kids and, you know, grandkids and, you know, puppies. I don't know. Just tell us a little <laughs> bit about your background and who you are. <laughs> Okay. Well, I am actually a fifth generation Dallas, Texas native, and I grew up in Southwest Dallas County, attended Dallas Baptist College, now university, majoring in physical education and recreation, went immediately to work for the city of Dallas Parks and Recreation Department, where I worked for 28 years. My last 14 years was uh, I was assigned to be the athletic and reservations manager where I was responsible for reserving 412 parks. And my husband, Ken Beam, and I actually met while strolling through the park one day. We met at a park in Oak Cliff called Kid Springs, and we actually got married at Kid Springs Park. He has two wonderful children, Therefore, I am a stepmother to two wonderful kids. Uh, the oldest is 48. The youngest is 45. And between them, I am the proud step-grandmother of four grandchildren. The oldest, oldest being 22. The next in line is 18. The next in line is 15. And Chance is six. And um, my parents, Jack and Rosemary Rumbly, where um, mother is continuing to be well known in the Dallas Fort Worth area. My father, uh, Jack Rumbly, played percussion, specifically the kettle drums, in the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra for 40 years. And he also played for the Casa Manana Musical Orchestra in Fort Worth, Texas, for 40 years. And my mother was head of speech and drama at Dallas Baptist College, now university, as why I chose to go to Dallas Baptist. Mother has a doctorate in speech and communication. I wanted to go to Dallas Baptist so I could appear in all of her musicals. And I did. I did. But um, Mother, like I say, is a, is a phenomenon, an icon in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And so many times people have asked me throughout my years of growing up, what is it like being the daughter of Jack and Rosemary Rumbly? And that is why I decided to title my autobiography, Growing Up Rumbly because it just tells what it's been like for the 69 years I've been on this earth being um, a rumbly. Of course, now I'm Jill Rumbly Bean, but it's been a, it's been a great life and I'm very blessed. And uh, my father being a musician, um, I play the flute. Um, and because when you're a product of a professional musician, you don't have a choice whether or not you want to play an instrument or not. So I play the flute and continue to play. And the piccolo. <laughs> and the piccolo. <laughs> a little, little quick harder. Quick question for you. Wasn't your father a teacher? Wasn't he band he director? Was. My dad was my band director at David W. Carter High School in Southwest Dallas County. And uh, he was the band director at David W. Carter from 1966 when it opened to 1974 when he finally retired to be full-time with the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra. Okay, gotcha. And hey, I'd already gotten out of high school. That was two years after I graduated from high school. <laughs> <laughs> Inter interesting. Well, you said that people ask you everywhere, and, and I know a little, or I guess a little of a lot, but 
only the fluff of your mother. Because mm-hmm. uh, I know you just had a birthday party for her. And I, I'm just curious, how old is your mother? She just turned 92. 92. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I bet that was a party and a half. It was. It was. And she's been a public speaker since, well, I guess when she, you know, got her doctorate at North Texas State University and she uh, is a, was a full-time book reviewer. Unfortunately, in 2021, um, Mother had a bad fall and was not able to continue her business as a full-time book reviewer. Kind of her business came to an abrupt stop. Well, now I uh, took over her business and I am a full-time book reviewer. Got you. Got you. Well, that is, that is super. Well, I, people need to, I've read your book. It, it is a fascinating book. And, you know, I usually ask the typical things because most, most of the books are fiction. So this is really about you. Now, did you have any siblings? I'm trying to remember. when I, I do. Your- I do. I have a brother. His name is Phil. He lives in Tyler. He is a professional musician, plays stand-up bass with uh, the East Texas Symphony Orchestra, so he kind of fell in my father's footsteps, and uh, plays in a couple of rock bands in Tyler. And uh, yeah, he was a band director and kind of took took on my daddy's footsteps, whereas I kind of modeled my mother's footsteps. Got you. Now, because I know you, um, would you mind telling them how you got into the uh, well, what generated and how you got crowned Miss Texas Senior America? Well, just kind of to make, make a long story short, uh, my mother was the MC of the pageant when it first started in 1995. And as a kid, I always adored watching pageants. I told my mom I always wanted to be in a pageant. I was taking dance. I was in the third grade. My dance teacher, Eva Jane Carson, decided to give a pageant called the Little Miss Pageant. Uh, I told my mom I want to be in this pageant. And my mother said, Jill, there's three reasons you can't be in this pageant. Number one, you are a product of two educators. And I, and you know, educators are poor. You'll always have everything you need, but you may not get everything you want. And then she said, I'm not the typical pageant mother to push and shove and to live vicariously through the kid who's competing on the stage. And then the third thing, I shudder to say this, but she says a lot of those pageants are fixed. And I was raised a happy kid, so I decided not to be in the pageant. Well, I went along with my mother in 1995 when she was the MC of the Ms. Texas Senior America pageant. And you have to be 60 years of age and you compete in four categories, philosophy of life, evening gown, talent and interview with judges. So in 1995, I wasn't 60, needless to say. And I just said to myself, self, when you turn 60, you're going to be in that pageant. And so mother was the MC all the way up to 2013. In 2013, the lady that started the pageant told my mother, she's sick of the pageant. She's willing the pageant to my mother. My mother responded saying, I do not have time to direct a pageant. But in case you haven't noticed, Jill has been on the front row of every pageant. Go ask her. She'll be the director of the pageant. She did. So 2013-14, I was the director. 2014-15, I was the director. But in 2015, I turned 60. I entered the pageant, and I won the title of Ms. Texas Senior America. There you go. Okay. Now I've heard the whole story. And, you know, people are fascinated with the uh, you know, you, you've done so many things and your book is just a culmination and probably the beginning of others. Uh, are you thinking about any other books at this time? You know, it's funny. I have been thinking about it. I really have. I, I, I'm not sure what the subject would be, but I really have. It's kind of um, addictive, you know? I mean, I ne- here's the deal. I never dreamed I'd be an author. I'm embarrassed to say to the public that, in high school, in English, I use cliff notes to get me through high school English because I really wasn't much of a reader. And here my mother reads almost 24-7, and I never dreamed I'd author a book. And so when I authored it, it like I say, it's kind of addicting. So I've been thinking about it. I'm not sure what the subject would be, but I have been pondering that. 
Okay. Well, Jill, at this point, we're going to take a little break and let our sponsors do their thing. Each and every one of us has a mission in life. Mine is to help people laugh through the good times and the bad. My name is Charlotte Canyon, and I am an author, a speaker, and a host on Indie Beacon Radio. If you need me to speak in an event or autograph my book, you can contact me at charlotte at charlottecanyon.com. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Texas Authors Institute of History is not only a nonprofit museum for Texas authors, TAIH is also a place where authors can learn about publishing and book marketing. Check out our new magazine, the Texas Authors Magazine, available for free at texasauthors.institute today. Thank you for watching the Texas Authors Institute of History show with your hostess, Charlotte Cannon. Welcome back to our show. We're interviewing Jill. I guess it's Jill Rumbly Bean, and she's written a book called Growing Up Rumbly, and it's all about how her famous parents are, you know, famous in this, this genre down here. Famous parents led her to do everything she's done. Now, I'm going to throw her for a twist right now. Jill, do you remember in your book, and I didn't know this about you till I read your book, but you talked about how you played the flute. But all of a sudden, you decided in high school you wanted to be the majorette. Can you tell a little bit about that story? Because I think it's cute. Yes, I can. Uh, I started taking twirling when I was in the third grade. And also in the third grade, if you're a product of the Dallas Independent School District, that's when you can choose an instrument. Of course, that's when my father approached me and said, okay, you're in the third grade now. What instrument do you want to play? I actually wanted to play the drums to be just like him, but my mother said, sorry, only one drummer per family, but I am sure glad I chose the flute because the flute has one case, drums have multiple. But um, I took twirling forever and I got into junior high school and uh, in the seventh grade, uh, if you're in the band, you are labeled as a band nerd. And so the alternative, from being a band nerd is to audition to be a majorette. So I was majorette at my junior high school, the eighth and ninth grade. I was no longer a band nerd. When I left junior high school and went to David W. Carter High School, 10th grade, I was labeled as a band nerd. But because you couldn't be a majorette unless you were in 11th and 12th grade. So I, I auditioned to be, you know, majorette, 11th and 12th grade, and I made it. So I was no longer labeled as a band nerd. <laughs> when I didn't hear dad say, uh, I mean, he didn't he used to choose him and he couldn't be a yeah. judge? Yeah, the, the story is uh, my father, when he started, he, he actually started at Grounder Junior High in 1964. And then in 66, they opened Carter High School. And daddy was probably, he was a good judge. Um, of whether or not somebody was a good twirler or a rotten twirler. So when I got to um, David W. Carter, I told my dad, and I said, now, Dad, I want to be a majorette. And he said, hmm, we have a problem. I've always been the judge for the majorettes when they audition. So since you're, uh, you're wanting to audition, I'm probably going to have to hire judges from wherever somebody that doesn't know me to judge the majorette auditions. And so he did, but I still made majorette. So he just said, you know, if, if I were to select you to be a majorette, well, then all your friends would say, well, the only reason you got to be majorette is because you're Mr. Rumbly's daughter. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. right. And that's, that, that is a good thing. Okay. I'm a, I don't know if you've ever heard of an indigo child. Have you ever heard that term? 
No, I know that I'm one, but you're an indigo child and you and I have a lot in common. And what it means is you do a lot of different things and you want to always learn something new. Yes. And yes. I'm just here to tell our audience she hasn't put that baton down yet, but she <laughs> keeps learning new things. Like she said, she's now does book, you know, book reviews and she and uh, I guess you, as you know, one of our favorite acts that you do is called um, Show Off. Uh, show Off, yes. And that's where, let's see, you sing, dance, play the flute, and twirl your baton. That's it. And that's what you did for your competition was but all of those things. Yes. And I know you still, you still are learning things. Okay, in this segment, though, we need to crunch down a little more on your book and Tell people a little more about it. Um, you know, is it your whole life? It, you know, do you take it in, in parts? Um, do you tell some nitty gritty stories? You know, tell us a little more about your book. Okay. Well, more or less the, the basis of the book was, um, was change. Because when I was, um, when I retired from the city of Dallas Parks and Recreation Department in 2015, being raised a Rumbly, my mother and father both said, well, Rumblies never retire, we rewire. So I rewired myself. I worked for the city of Louisville, Texas as their senior coordinator. I worked for the city of Rowlett as their senior coordinator. And then my last position was the wellness director at CC Young Senior Living. And, you know, there was just a lot of change in my life. I was married previously before I met my husband, Ken. We were married 10 years. And that was a big change. Unfortunately, um, divorce happened in our relationship. And uh, we parted amicably, but it, we just kind of grew apart. But again, the, the kind of the whole focus, the, the focus of the book is change. And change helped me lead to focus. Because I had a couple of mishaps uh, last May 23rd, 2023, I fell, fractured my femur, and I've been a jazzercise instructor for 43 years, and that falling down was totally a shock to me. But, you know, in the hospital, you know, I had to go through rehab, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, just recently, I was in the hospital again. And so the change is those things that happened to me, I think that God was planning on me having more focus. He wanted me to focus and not have my finger in every little pot there is in the world. So I tried, I tried to slow down a little bit, which I have. I have, and I have some scriptures. And for each chapter, I have a relative scripture that relates to what the, chap what the chapter is about. You know, because being a stepmom is not always easy, being a part of a blended family. You know, I had some trials and tribulations with being a stepmom, and that's just part of, again, you know, part of being a, in a blended family. But fortunately, I overcame a lot of things, and I overcame the fracture in my femur. I overcame the blood clots that I had, but I came to realize that, that God had a, had a plan for me, and he wanted me to not go through all those changes, but to find focus in my life. And in my book, I say, well, the only person that doesn't like change is a baby with a wet diaper. So. <laughs> so change. Well, there's a lot of people that don't like to change. Yeah. You know, you're in that senior, but it, but it is so important to stay active. Yes. And I think that's why, you know, you stay active and stay young and change is what helps, you know, helps you, you know, evolve, evolve through it. Yeah. Uh, I know I asked you early on about, you know, you got an idea for a new book. Is it going to be fiction? Is it gonna be nonfiction? Is it going to be more uh, in depth about your life or, you know, I think, what do you I think it would be more in depth about my life. You know, I really do. I do. Cause there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, have happened e even since I've authored the book, and uh, so I think that I think that's how I would how I would lean, but I'm just not sure. But I've been really thinking strongly about it, so we'll see what happens. Well, so it could be maybe in the self help 
genre. Yeah. Tell right. them things that you went through and to help them go through there. So yes. I mean, that's yes. what I, I, I think I hear you, you know, yeah. your genre. Because people will ask me, because I've written eight books now, and they will ask me, you know, what's your genre? Everything, you know, I mean, it's okay to change your genre and, mm -hmm. you know, do different different things and yeah. stuff. I'm noticing your earrings. Is there a story behind the earrings with the hands on them? Well, and they actually have tragedy and comedy faces. Oh, they do. They yeah, do. because this year, the uh, book that I'm reviewing is titled The Untold Stories of Broadway by Jennifer Ashley Tepper. And there's four volumes. The first volume talks about my four favorite theaters on Broadway, the Winter Garden, the Marriott Marquis, the Richard Rogers Theater, and the uh, Neil Simon Theater. So I had a book review today, and I just haven't even changed out of my clothes. But yeah, and I always tell everybody, in case y'all don't applause, I bring my own applause, applause section. So, <laughs> you bring your own <laughs> Oh, well, I keep expecting you to have those, you know, that shirt that's got, no, don't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've, well got, Jill, I've, got, I've got musical notes on the shirt. You've got your musical yeah. notes. That's true. Well, Jill, we're going to take another break and we'll be right back. I am happy to announce that the third issue of the Texas Authors Magazine is now available for free. Go to texasauthors.institute. Select the magazine heading at the top, then scroll down to issue 3. You are always welcome to review the other issues from our inaugural year. While at our website, Texas authors can sign up for our newsletter that keeps you informed of the latest news, tips, and tools to be a successful author. Go to texasauthors.institute for more. Thank you for watching the Texas Authors Institute of History show with your hostess, Charlotte Cannon. Well, we've been speaking with Jill Beam, and oh my gosh, she's a fascinating lady. I've known her for years. She's actually a very good friend of mine. But she recently wrote her book, Growing Up Rumbly, because she has two famous parents, and she kind of is an entertainer herself. Well, she is an entertainer herself. And Jill, during this segment, we need you to let our listeners know how they can reach you to have you speak how they can get your book if you have a website if you know where can they find about all about you okay well the book is on amazon growing up rumbly and then my website is jazzinjill.com j-a-z-z-i-n-j-i-l-l Dot com, And it has a prompt where you can reach out to me if you want me as a speaker. Uh, most of the book clubs that I speak for, they're, you know, they're closed to members of the book clubs. But I do uh, list the other speeches that I give possibly to a retirement community, uh, you know, an assisted living, a Lions Club group, whatever. I try to list those on my website. Then I also have a blog of some articles that I write for a publication called Celebration Magazine. And uh, my mother and I both write for that magazine. If you're so inclined to subscribe, the website is celebrationmag.com. 
Uh, my mother writes an article titled, you know your old win, dot, dot, dot. And I write an article titled, a jolt from Jill. But that's the main way to reach me is through my website, jazzandjill.com. And then again, my book is on Amazon, Growing Up Rumbly. Okay, I love to ask my authors this. If you are speaking to, because there's a lot of wannabe authors out there. As a matter of fact, I think everybody has a book in them, but only one or 2% are going to write it. Mm -hmm. But if you had to give advice to someone, you know, to write a book, because like I say, we know everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give them? Like you just said, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody does. Um, I was fortunate enough to find, you know, Phyllis Jenkins, who was in the Miss Texas Senior America pageant, who has a nonprofit uh, called Powerful Journey. And I hooked up with her and um, she was kind of the reason that spurned me to write this book and be a part of a journey with nine other author authors. Uh, the book was released on uh, April 20th. And I and and her her uh, byline is, um, how's it go? It says everyone has a story, but no one knows my name. And then when you write your story, then people find out your name because you're the author of your story. So I just think everybody. In fact, I have so many. This is so funny. I have several friends who are flight attendants and they tell me these hysterical stories about what happens on the airplane. I said, oh my gosh, y'all need to write a book. You know, my friend that flies for Southwest Airlines, she said everything from a donkey on a plane, from a chicken and all this stuff. Yeah. And oh it's my like, gosh. yeah. So everybody has a story to tell. And I would just say, you know, to write your story, find an editor, find a publisher and just go for it. Because it's just such a, it's just such a high to think that, wow, I'm an author. And, and to me, that's kind of a big deal. A person who used Cliff, a person who used cliff Notes in high school. <laughs> <laughs> As it is true. It's true. And English was not my number one subject either. Well, so I, was, I was good in English. It's just that I wasn't a reader, you know. And I, and I, I think another thing I was not real proficient in was comprehension because I think I had so many, I was like a ping pong ball, boing, 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 boing. And that's why God put me down a couple of times so I could have focus in my life, focus. Well, Jill, this, is, this has been great. I've learned even more about you than I knew than before. And I loved reading your book. If anybody wants to read a fun book, I mean, it is, it is, it is fun from front to back. It's just full of all kinds of little fun stories in there about her life and growing up rumbly. Um, I think that would be just really cool. It was, it was just really, really good. Well, I'm Charlotte Canyon, and I have one little message for you before I leave. A rose is like a book. You can't know its beauty until you look at it. But a book is like a rose. You won't know its full beauty until you open it. You have a blessed day. Bye for now. Welcome to the Texas Authors Institute TV show, produced by Beyond Bourgeois for the Texas Authors Institute of History, Incorporated, copyright 2024. If you would like to become a sponsor of our show and help us produce great content, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show as a Texas author, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com for more information. Music is Frolic of Words, created for Texas Authors Institute by Happy.